Hi, I'm Shanoj Pansu, and this is the second part of the series, Low Cost Brain Machine Interface for Controlling Mechanical Systems, under the guidance of Professor Alexander Harbour at RIT New York. In this video, I will guide you through the steps of writing a MATLAB code for reading the EEG signals, processing the raw data, and finally, eyeblink detection. The MATLAB code will also be available on the GitHub page, the link for which will be provided in the description below. Okay, so now let's begin with MATLAB. Here we have tried to build a code with simple signal processing, which tends to do really well. Most of the data is taken from the site on data sheet available on the OpenBCI websites. So let's begin with the code itself. First we call functions such as CL, C, close all, etc. As I believe it's a good practice that we call them. Now we define some values which are specific to the site on board. The site on both sends no data until it is told to start sending data. To begin the data transfer, we have to transmit a single ASCII character B. Once the character B is received, continuous data transfer in binary format will start. To stop, we have to send an S. Now the chip kit on a 32-bit board does not go through a recite cycle when its serial port is open. So it's possible to connect to a 32-bit board and not know its state. In this case, the terminal or application should write a character V to the serial port, which causes the system to reset its state to default values. Therefore, we have now defined the characters B, V and S, which we are going to call out later in our code. We then define the number of packet bytes and the scale factor based on the 24 times default gain. And now coming to set the main parameters of the code such as the input buffer size and the timeout. These are set as arbitrary values which seem to work pretty well. Now, we define the site on board serial object using the port name of our laptop. For a Mac, it may be something like this. You can find out using the terminal window on your MacBook. For a Windows system, it may look something like COM1, COM2 or whichever port you have connected the USB dongle into. We now set the site on board input buffer size and timeout using these commands. We then use this command to open the communication channel with the site on board and initiate the reset. We then pause to give the board time to reset. Once the open BCI has initialized itself, it sends dollar 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 sign. Therefore, we wait for the board to initialize itself and send the dollar 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 values. Since the ASCII value of the dollar sign is 36, we have set the value to 108, that is 36 plus 36 plus 36. Now we start the communication. We have taken j equal to 1 to 1000 as we are reading at a thousand samples or for a thousand time. We then initialize sum outer equal to 0. Now, for k equal to 1 to 50, we start reading the site on data from the site on for the number of packets bytes specified in the code above. Here we have the information for the different bytes, such as the byte 1 is for header equal to 160, byte 2 is our sample number, byte 3 to 5 is the data value for AEG channel 1, and so on. Since we have used channel 2 in the site on board, I will be using the 6th, 7th, and the 8th data value. Now we use the command DE or D to buy, which converts a non-negative decimal integer to a binary row vector, and then converts to a decimal value using the two's complements interpretation. Now if D1 equal to zero, the sum is zero, else we start taking the readings by using the scale factor equation for converting counts to volts. This equation is derived using the ADS1299 data sheet. At the end, we simply use the command voltage equal to gain star sum and sum auto equal to sum auto plus voltages. We now have the average voltage and can plot it. Let's see how it looks. As you can see, we are able to direct the data. Here, the eye blinks are depicted by the voltage drops as we can see. 
Also, sometimes the data can keep going upwards like we can see, or maybe even downwards. That is, the data might have a trend. This can be due to a number of reasons, such as bad conductivity or something else. Now, to fix that, I have used this MATLAB command to detrain the data. Here, it calculates the best fit line of the data and subtracts that from the data. Now this gives us the detrained data. Let's have a look. As you can see, we have the raw data in the subplot 1 and the detrained data in the subplot 2. Now to reduce some noise in the signal, I have used a simple MATLAB command of moving average filter or move mean filter, which takes average of two consecutive values to give us an output. Let's see how it looks. As we can see, the graph has smoothened a bit, but even if there was more noise, our system would not have any problem. Now, to detect the peaks, I've used a moving variance filter. It, this helps us to detect any sudden change in the data by finding variance in two consecutive values. Let's see how this works. We can clearly see that whenever there are peaks in the signal, there is a sort of peak in the filter output, else it is close to zero or a straight line. Now I have converted this to zeros and one so that it is easy to give a command to the mechanical system that we will connect in the next part of the series. Let's see how I've done that. Now, after seeing the data values of the moving variance filter output, I have arbitrary set a value. Now, if any value of the data is below this, it will go to zero and above it will go to one. Let's see how it comes out to be. So, as you can see over here, I am clearly able to detect the eye blinks in MATLAB in forms of zeros and ones. Now, that's it for the MATLAB code. So, that would be all for this video. And the next part of the video would be to interface a mechanical system with MATLAB, which would receive these commands and perform the desired function. Thank you.